In this video, we'll be taking a look at the oscillator outputs of the Synchrodyne and the Synchrodyne Expand. These are some of the more straightforward components, so this won't take long, and I'll cover both of them in one video. So the first Synchrodyne has a well-labeled VCO section down here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I have my SQ1 off screen, and I'm going to put a sequence into the one volt per octave just so we're not listening to one note over and over and over again. That goes there. And then that is also sequencing a maths, which will be triggering our VCA. So let's take a listen to the first output, which is going to be the sawtooth output down here. So no surprises there. Uh, it's a typical sawtooth oscillator. We've got coarse and fine control. Goes very high down to sub audio and LFO rates. Fine tune control. Now we also have a square wave output. Note that that does not have pulse width modulation, but the oscillator on the second VCO does. We've got a couple more inputs, one of which is hard sync. So for that, I'm just going to patch the second oscillator output to the sync input of the first oscillator. So now you can hear that hard sync effect, and as I change the frequency of the input oscillator, you get different sync effects. Sawtooth. There's also inputs for linear and exponential FM. So I'm going to take the sine wave output of my DPO and I'm going to plug that into the linear FM jack. And then it behaves as we would expect it to. And then we also have exponential FM input. And that's pretty much it for the Synchrodyne oscillator. Uh, aside from the fact that you could take these outputs or the output is normaled to the input of the PLL. For the Synchrodyne expand oscillator, we're gonna use the same random notes that we have going into our one volt per octave input. And we're gonna listen to the two outputs. Same as before, we have the saw wave output. Coarse and fine controls are up here. Uh, there are two inputs for linear and exponential FM. We're not going to go through them because there's no attenuators and they have the same function as on the first Synchrodyne. Same goes for the sync input, uh, which is also the same. Uh, the main difference here is on the square wave output, we also have pulse width modulation. So that's on this control here. And there is an input for pulse width modulation, CV control. So we'll hook that up to an LFO. So you get some classic PWM sounds there. And that's it for the oscillator sections. They can be used uh, by themselves as standalone oscillators and they work pretty well for that. And real quickly we'll go through the signal flow so you can see the normalized uh, signal path. Briefly, we're going to go through the signal flow for the f two oscillators. So the oscillator for the Synchrodyne is located right here. Uh, and these gazintas and goes out as are pretty straightforward. So uh, you've got the ovally shaped things, which are your jacks, circles, which are knobs. Uh, so you've got all your inputs, your attenuators, and your sawtooth core VCO. So this is generating a sawtooth. Uh, by charging and discharging a capacitor. Uh, this has the pulse output. The pulse output is normal to the frequency multiplier. And the saw output is no, uh, available normally here. Now, there is another split here. So the sawtooth output goes to the audio input. 
So you can just take the sawtooth output or you can have it go through the VCA. The VCA output is available on the Synchronine Expand. Remember, everything in gray is from the Expand. Uh, this also goes through the wave folder. So the sawtooth by default will go through the wave folder through the folding switch and then up into the mixer to the compressor, which then outputs to the filter in Synchrodyne 1. So when you have the Synchrodyne Expand installed, uh, this normal signal in the wave folder will go through the compressor first before going through the switch capacitor filter. Uh, without that in here, uh, it would go through the wave folder directly into uh, the filter, I believe. So uh, for VCO2, so another sawtooth core, uh, you've got all the inputs in the jacks that go into the VCO, as we saw before. The pulse width modulation output, so the square wave output or PWM output, goes to the PLL in. So that is normal, and if you insert something else into PLL2, you'll break that. Uh, it goes to this switch down here, which we'll cover at a later date. And then this also, the saw output goes all the way up through here. There's an attenuator uh, and another input. This attenuator turns out to be very important uh, as far as if you get a sawtooth signal and you don't know where it's coming from, check this one first. Uh, it goes first into filter two, and then it also splits off this branch here goes all the way back to the compressor. So by default, VCO1 way down here and VCO2 will get mixed together and sent to the compressor, which then gets sent to filter one. So again, if you're listening to filter one or monitoring filter one output and you hear a VCO that you're not sure where it's coming from, check this attenuator right here because you need to have that down unless you don't want to mix the two together to be sent to filter one. So by themselves, each VCO is pretty straightforward, but when it comes to some of the normalizing that goes on, uh, you could end up with the signals going to the filter and the compressor and the other filter, unless you insert something to break those normalized connections. And that, in a nutshell, are the two VCOs for the Synchrodyne and the Synchrodyne Expand.